Good morning, everybody. This morning, we are going to talk about um, this morning, we're going to talk about um, myrrh. And myrrh is a great oil. It comes from a resin that we're going to talk about. Let me show you. Um, there. So this is what a myrrh tree looks like. It's kind of scraggly and it's got lots of thorns and pokey things. Um, it's native to regions in Africa and Arabia. It's a small tree that produces a sap that hardens into resin known as myrrh. Typically, typically a thorny tree or shrub, the myrrh tree produces few leaves and rugged um, angled branches. Um, Due to its highly aromatic nature, myrrh has been used since ancient times for medicine, perfumery, incense, incense, religious purposes, and burials. When the myrrh tree is harvested, it bleeds the tree sap, which then turns hard and glossy. And then it's through steam distillation that um, we get the oil. So this is after they kind of score the bark of the tree and it gets, that's what it looks like when it's oozing the, all of the sap. And then when they're dried and hard, then they look like this. And really um, the myrrh resin and the frankincense resin look very, very similar. Um, and, and it just, I mean, I can't believe that these, these trees where doTERRA harvests them is in Somaliland. And um, it's really, it's really um, desertous, desert, deserty. I don't know. It's it's a really it's a desolation. It's not a lush green um, area, and I'm not sure that this was taken. This picture was taken in Somaliland because I'm not sure that Somaliland has um, those mountains. Um, but anyway, it's a pretty desolate region. Um, but, um, and this is the same region that we talked about um, last week when we were talking about the Sanag um, Hospital. Um, that's, in, that's in Somaliland. And the blessing that that hospital has been to all of the people in this region is just huge. I hope you got a chance to watch the video about that um, because it's, it's pretty amazing. So just some historical things. It's been used for over 4,000 year, years as a perfume, incense, and health aid. It was used in embalming and religious ceremonies. Myrrh is mentioned in the Bible 152 times. It was important then, used as a spice, a natural remedy, remedy or to purify the dead. Hippocrates referred to myrrh more than any other substance. Three times more valuable than frankincense. Myrrh is three times more valuable than frankincense, but frankincense is five times as much in demand due to its scarcity. Um, frankincense, it's a great idea to use it daily. Um, myrrh, use myrrh as needed. And we're gonna talk about all the reasons to use it. It's, um, the frankincense and myrrh are two of the most powerful essential oils in the world. Both oils are safe during pregnancy, and there's a ton of research going on about these oils all, all the time. So um, myrrh is often known as the queen of oils. Frankincense is the king of oils. Myrrh is the um, queen of oils. Emotionally, it's the oil of Mother Earth. It comes from the resin of a tree, and all trees are very grounding and emotionally balancing. Myrrh nurtures the soul's relationship with its maternal mother and with the earth. It supports individuals who have had disturbances with the mother-child bond. Myrrh can help bridge the gap and heal the disturbance. It assists individuals in feeling safe and secure. It assists individuals in letting go of fear. It rekindles trust within the soul as the individual learns to once again live in trust, confidence, and in the goodness of life. 
and, and it helps the soul feel safer and more at home. So if you're feeling dis, a disrupted maternal um, connection, whether that's um, a connection to Mother Earth or whether that's to your um, earthly mother, um, if you're suffering with distrusting, feeling neglected, feeling unsafe in the world and malnourished, um, myrrh is the oil to use. The positive properties, if you want to feel more of these, feel safe in the world, have healthy attachments, trusting, bonding, a maternal connection, nurtured, loved, secure, and grounded. Doesn't nurtured, loved, secure, and grounded just doesn't, don't those words just make you feel good? Um, so myrrh is, is an oil to, um, it is an oil to remember. And myrrh um, gets really thick. It starts out really thick, but the longer you've had the bottle, it gets really thick. And I, a while ago, I went to get my myrrh, and I guess I hadn't used it for a while. And it was really hard to get the lid off. Um, and so I just did what you do with a jar of jam or something. I ran it under hot water, and then I could twist the, it softened the myrrh enough that I could twist the lid off um, and get it off. And then some had kind of, it had gotten kind of gunky around the top. And so I just cleaned out the lid and stuff. The other thing that I think that I have done and that you might consider is after, with your bottle of myrrh, after you've used a little bit, then add some fraction, add just a little bit of fractionated coconut oil in it. Um, cause it will make it so you don't have to hold it upside down for five minutes waiting for one drop. Um, cause myrrh gets thick enough that you almost literally, literally have to do that. Um, so consider that that's what I do with my vetiver also is add a little bit of fractionated coconut oil, just so it is a little bit more fluid. Um, the top properties is anti-infectious, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, anti-tumor, an astringent, a tonic, antiviral, antimicrobial, an expectorant, a carminative, and antifungal. So just looking at those um, properties will tell you a lot of things that it can be used for. Um, so some of the primary benefits of it are it is a potent antioxidant. Um, it, a 2010 study found that myrrh could be um, very supportive of your liver and preventing damage to your liver. Um, it has antibacterial and antifungal benefits. So one of those, and one of the ways to think about that with the antiviral, antimicrobial, um, antibacterial, antifungal, which I don't have on the, uh, yeah, I've got the antifungal, is that it is good in helping your body um, tell unwanted guests that they're not welcome and that they need to just keep moving on. Um, so it's, it's very supportive of your immune system. Um, historically, myrrh was used to treat wounds and prevent infections. It can still be used in this manner on minor fungal irritations. When your feet get some unpleasant things with them, it's great to do. Um, if you have, um, and desirable um, appearances on your face, you can use myrrh to help with that. Um, it, um, my brain just went completely blank. It can be supportive in get, uh, getting rid of bad breath. So that's an interesting one. Um, it is anti-parasitic. So um, that's, I hope that we never, need it for that, but there, there are multiple oils that are anti-parasitic. And that's good to remember if we travel to an area where parasites are plentiful, it's good to know which oils to have on hand. It is uh, great to maintain healthy skin by soothing chapped or cracked patches. Uh, it's commonly added to skincare products to help with moisturizing and also for fragrance. 
ancient Egyptians used it to prevent aging and maintain healthy skin. I was talking to Kathy Griffith, who off and on is on this call, and she said she started putting it on her heels because they were so cracked and sore. And she said it has just, she just takes one or two drops and puts, puts it in her hands and then rubs it on her heels. She said it has made a huge difference with her cracked heels. Um, if you've got fine lines, dry skin, stretch marks, or cracked heels, apply it to the areas of concern. It can be um, great being used for massages, or you can add it to a warm bath. Um, it, you can use it to promote a youthful looking complexion. Um, in the Bible, Esther used it before she got married to the king. Um, myrrh was one of five oils used in her six months, six months of intensive beauty treatment. Add a drop or two to your lotion or moisturizer to help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. If you have, um, well, we kind of talked about it. There's a condition where you have really um, dry skin patches. It's very effective in helping with that. Um, it can um, work as a sunscreen and prevent, help protect your skin from damage from the sun. Um, it can be used if for, to support gum health. You can apply it directly to the gums to soothe and repair them. It is very supportive of thyroid and immune health. Apply it to the base of your neck and the bottoms of your feet. Um, if you have unwanted, um, unwanted guests coming into your body, then this is, myrrh is great to use to help get rid of them, but also using it on a regular basis to help so that they never get a foothold in our bodies. Um, it is a great for meditation, diffuse it to create a sense of calm. It also can be a digestive aid, apply it to the abdomen or take in a capsule um, and it will help your digestion. Um, it is found in Forgive, Huga and Immortelle. And it blends um, with frankincense, sandalwood or clove. I mean, you can use it with lots of other things. Um, if you want an intriguing, this is a quote from a doTERRA website. For an intriguing fresh scent, blend myrrh with floral or leafy oils like lavender, eucalyptus, or jasmine. When you want to produce a sweet herbaceous scent, consider blending myrrh with lemon, juniper berry, or grapefruit oils. So a um, caution, pregnant women, which all of us are past that stage, but we all have loved ones who might still be in the childbearing years. So this is good to remember. Um, pregnant women should avoid taking myrrh because it may enhance you during contractions. So in labor, you might want to use myrrh. Um, it can potentially lower blood pressure. Um, notice that's a potential. So you need to use caution. It's not a guaranteed thing. Um, if you have blood sugar conditions, you want to be careful with it. Um, if you are on an anticoagulant such as warfarin, you want to be careful with this um, and talk to your doctor about it. So just a little bit of trivia is myrrh means bitter and was referred to in the Bible as the balm of Gilead. And we all know that it was given to the Christ child along with frankincense um, and gold. Um, and it was also presented at his death to be used prior to, um, to burial. Um, I am going to send you, I've got a whole bunch of different recipes that I got from different sources that are um, some great things. And I will send you the normal, um, you know, handout there. So myrrh is something really, it's an oil to really consider having in your stash of oils and in your arsenal of, for 
for protecting and enhancing our, our quality of life. Um, so really consider getting it.